Making the Grade is sponsored by a grant from Monsignor Craig Harrison and St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Bakersfield. Welcome to another episode of Making the Grade, where we share good news about Catholic education here in the Diocese of Fresno and beyond. I'm so thrilled that we have two very special guests with us this month to take on our topic of forming student leaders in our schools. But before we do that, I thought it would be really fun to reintroduce our new co-host, Russell Ray Pond, and for Russell and I to chat just a little bit about our own high school high experiences. Schools. Hey, Russell. How's it going? Can you just remind everybody, since you're back again okay. as a regular host now, a little bit more about yourself and uh, sure. your uh, background? I, I am a school psychologist with Fresno Unified uh, School District. I also uh, coach uh, varsity boys basketball as a hobby. and. Um, I have uh, two children, a uh, second grader and first grader, who uh, uh, attend St. Anthony School. So Catholic education is a big part of our, of our daily life. Awesome. Yeah. So Russell, I know I'm causing perhaps some trauma, but I've, I've asked both of us to recollect some of our high school memories. Oh and my goodness. Okay. I know we've tried to repress those over the last several years, but yes. hey, were you, a, were you a student leader in high school? Did you participate in any student government or leadership activities on campus? I did. You know, my family uh, always believed in a well-rounded comprehensive education mm -hmm. so they pushed uh, I know and your mom and I know she would do yes, that. <laughs> you know, she encouraged uh, us to my, my brother and I to be a part of uh, the school com community other than just being in the classroom so uh, anything from student government mm -hmm. as a class representative or junior class president to athletics uh, as a basketball and uh, tennis player uh, and then doing community service through the school so uh, those are uh, the things I can recall, at least, in terms so of... So you actually ran for student government and yes. won, were successfully elected. Yes. I, on the other hand, am too much of a chicken to run for student government. <laughs> I never did that. But I was a leader in high school. I was actually, do you know what it is, a tall flag girl? Yes. I marched with the marching band. And I was actually the captain of the flag squad for two years. And really, I think, uh, so many times over the course of my life that those skills that I learned in high school on the marching field or leading parades, um, leading my fellow students. Sure. I went back to those quite often, like during my career um, working in management, those, those high school lessons that you learn about how to work with people and right. really how to assert yourself as a leader can come on in handy later in life. Well, absolutely, that, that formation period when you were a young adult, those, were, those are the times when you can test all those different skills. And uh, you can, at that point, afford to fail and you know, use trial and error to find out what your style is with regards to uh, you know, leading both yourself and then leading others. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm so happy that today we have two really special guests who've come in, and these are both students from Garces High School in the Diocese of Fresno. But before we introduce the girls, um, I want to let you know let just a little bit more about their school, this wonderful Garces Memorial School. We have some photos to show you while I share a little bit more about Garces and what our uh, students are experiencing there. Garces Memorial High School is in Bakersfield, California, and it's actually Bakersfield's premier high school. It's academically challenging, college prep, and a co-educational Catholic high school, which was founded in 1947 by the Christian Brothers and the Dominican Sisters of St. Thomas Aquinas. Today, it's operated in the Diocese of Fresno and staffed by a lay faculty and administration who are inspired by their Catholic faith to minister to the needs of a very diverse student body. And we're so happy today to have two members of that student body right here with us. So, Russell, why don't you introduce our first guest? Sure, I'd like to introduce uh, Shelby Stewart, is that correct? Yes. Right, okay. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you will be the uh, junior class vice president correct. this upcoming school year, correct? Yes. Uh, last year, you were the um, sophomore class president. Oh, yes. And uh, from what I understand, you, you were involved in a lot of activities, uh, extracurricular activities at school. Yes. Uh, including, um, if I make sure if I get this correct, as a cheerleader. Yeah. And uh, as a member of the Young Republicans. Correct. That's correct. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Christian life community, how that works and what you, uh, what you do at school? A CLC is you go and like you eat lunch with a bunch of your friends, and a teacher is a moder moderator. And then you do like 
extracurricular activities. So my CLC in particular, we went to St. Francis, one of our local parishes, and we served food to the homeless one night, and we do that quite often. Okay, excellent. Great. And that's Shelby. Welcome, Welcome Shelby. Thank you. So great to have you here. Um, and I want to introduce our second guest, which is Erica Delgado. Hi, Erica. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to Making the Grade. Um, Erica is actually the junior class representative, so you girls are going to be in class together next year, right? And Erica plays volleyball and soccer, and she's actually the member of the 2013 Girls Soccer CIF championship team yes. and also in a CLC as was just described mm -hmm. and a member of the link crew which I want to hear more about that and I'm also happy to say that she was a sophomore class homecoming princess so yeah. welcome Erica <laughs> tell you. me what is the link crew well I just applied for it and it's basically it's a group of juniors and seniors and you get together with freshmen like once a month and you just help them like along with their freshman year and introducing them to high school and all the activities you get to do Terrific. Mm -hmm. So, and I do have to ask about that uh, that little homecoming princess thing. Yeah. How how is a homecoming princess picked in high school these days? Uh, well, people nominate you, and then they just do like a big voting, and then this one. And you get to um, on the homecoming game, you get to ride in a Mercedes around oh, the football field. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. What a special memory that is. And those are the memories that you guys will have for a really long time. So basically, what I'd like to ask both of you to start off with is um, just about your decision to attend Garces, to attend a Catholic high school, and what that's meant to you so far. So Shelby, why don't you tell us how you chose Garces, how you and your parents chose it? Well, my grandma, my dad's mom, okay. went to Garces. So it's been in the family. My dad wasn't able to attend Garces, though. So she really wanted me to go. And then once I went to the open house, it just felt like the right choice for me. Mm -hmm. Had you been in Catholic elementary school? No, I went to a Lutheran school before. Oh, really? But okay. it was, so I was in the private school system, but it was mm -hmm. a really good choice for me. So you met a lot of new friends. I and... went in knowing nobody and that's, I wouldn't do it any different. Wow, that's that's fantastic. And I'm sure that's a real testament for the school too, that it was such a welcoming environment. Oh, it was. How about you, Erica? What prompted you to go to Garces? I wasn't planning on attending Garces, but um, my cousins actually go there, and they kind of persuaded me to go to Really? Mm-hmm. And I used to go to a Catholic preschool, okay. and then I switched to public, but going to Garces was a really good decision. So yeah. being in Catholic school now means things like wearing uniforms oh, and yeah. perhaps having some different rules. Do you feel like you've settled in pretty well to Yes, I love wearing a uniform. Do you? Why is that? <laughs> it tell makes me. it easier. You don't have to pick out anything to wear. <laughs> Can I tell you, when I went off to college, I actually had been in Catholic school from preschool all the way through when I graduated from high school. So lots of years of wearing uniforms. And I remember my first year at Notre Dame standing in front of my closet like, what will I possibly wear today? <laughs> It's a big thing, so don't discount the power of a nice school uniform. <laughs> That's great. So uh, I, I think we've talked a little bit about some of your high school activities, but I want to know from both of you, and we'll start off with Erica, what were some of the things that you were involved with in middle school? Did you do student government or anything like that back in middle school? No. No? No mm -hmm. activities? Not Did you do sports? You must have if you're oh, yeah. active on the sports team. Mm -hmm. So were, what teams were you on in middle school? Um, I was played volleyball and then a little bit of basketball. But I play club soccer too. And club that soccer. T for those who don't know, what's club soccer? Uh, it's like a team, and I've been with them since I was little, and we just travel like all over California to play. Okay. Mm -hmm. And were some of those teammates then eventually on your Garces team as well? Yeah. So mm -hmm. some people that you're used to playing with. Yeah. How about you, Shelby? What did you do in middle school? I went, my school was very, very small, so we didn't have a lot of extracurriculars okay. in school. But I danced for nine years. And that opened a lot of doors for me, just knowing mm -hmm. different people and meeting a lot of different people. What type of dance? I did ballet, jazz, tap, modern, and point. Oh my goodness. So I was busy. That is busy and very physical as oh, well. Yes. I don't think people know how much exercise goes into dance. And are you still dancing now? No, I'm not. Just the school and being involved, it was just all too much. So I mm -hmm. had to make some sacrifices. So you hung up your point shoes. I did. <laughs> <laughs> As student leaders now, and, uh, and in your experience, how would you describe an effective leader? What about you, Shelley? What do you think? A leader is someone who isn't afraid to do what's right, even if everybody else isn't doing it. 
So if everybody else is going out and doing bad things and you're like, no, I don't want to do that, and then you try to say, guys, let's get on the right path. Let's do what we know to be right. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe a leader to be. Okay, how about you, Erica? An effective leader, what, it, what constitutes an effective leader for you? I think someone you can look up to and like trust. and. Yeah. So someone that uh, uh, engenders uh, uh, a sense of character? Yeah. Right? Someone that, um, uh, that uh, has a relationship with you that it will make it easier for you to follow? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are all effective? Yeah. There's all signs of an effective leader. You know, leader. I'm really curious about something that you said, Shelby, which is not being afraid to stand up for the right thing, for what you know is right. Do you Have you had a circumstance like that that you can think of in high school? Well, just like going out to parties, like mm -hmm. you know bad things are going to happen. So if you mm -hmm. can say like, no, I don't want to be a part of that. Let's all go bowling or mm -hmm. let's do something. Let's go to the movies. So we all get to hang out, but we don't have to do all those things. I think that's actually a big point that you just made, which is part of the role of leadership is really kind of standing up um, in a time maybe when it's less than popular, right, Russell? Right. And, and being the one, I think a lot of times when um, you're with a group of teenagers, and I know this because I have a son who's a teenager, that you kind of look at each other you know, for, for the role model. Um, and you look to your friends who gravitate towards leadership, and it can be in simple ways like that like what to do on a Friday night so yeah. that's great I'm, I'm really curious Erica to know kind of um, in a Catholic school environment how being a student leader a student athlete somebody who's working towards the future how that's really been impacted by your faith life and kind of how your faith life inspires you to be a stronger leader well I just like um, can you repeat that oh actually? sure just <laughs> I guess I should back up a moment and just say um, at a Catholic school definitely we know that faith is a, a big part of the school environment at a school like Garces versus a Catholic high school or a public high school that you might go to. So what are some examples of I guess faith and leadership and do you, does your, for example, does your sports team pray together and how does that impact you personally uh, yeah, when you we, have that opportunity? We pray before every game mm -hmm. and after every practice and we all hold hands and it just kind of brings us all together mm -hmm. and makes us come closer as a team. Have you found that in your own personal spiritual life that that environment of praying with your teammates or praying with your classmates or in a student student government type of a role mm -hmm. has that impacted you personally in your own personal spiritual life? I feel like it just brings us all together more and more like a family. Mm -hmm. How about you, Shelby, on that topic of, of spirituality, your own personal spirituality, and how, I guess, how your personal faith strengthens you to be a good school leader? I think it strength, strengthens us because we need God to show us where we should go. So if we always look to Him, He will lead us in the right direction. Is this something that's new for you at Garza, something that you felt strengthening within yourself over the last few years? Yeah. It is. Do you guys have retreats at school? That, we do. And tell, tell us a little bit about the retreats. We have a retreat every year. Mm -hmm. So our freshman year, our sophomore year, our junior year, and our senior year. Um, the freshman and sophomore have both only been day retreats. Mm -hmm. So we go and then we do like some team building. So we grow as our, with our class and we pray and we'll have different speakers come talk to us. So it's been really a really good experience. Great. Where will you guys go for your junior retreat? Do you know how that where where that I, takes place? I think we go to Kairos, but I'm not for sure. Okay. It sounds like you have experiences in and in and out of a uh, Catholic school setting. What are the biggest differences for you? Uh, you know, being uh, a member of a Catholic school as opposed to when you were, uh, you know, in middle school and grade school in, in another type of setting in public school or for you in, in uh, being in a Lutheran school. Are there any major differences? Things that you can uh, point to? Not really. Okay. It's been, it was a really easy transition. A lot of the same values, so. Okay, how about you, Erica? I thought it was different, like public and private school. What were the biggest differences for you? Well, praying every day. Because like at public school, they don't really do that. They don't do that at all. Right. For our viewers that don't know, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what a prayer life at Garces is like. Do you pray at the beginning of the day, at the beginning of each class? Mm -hmm. What what happens in the prayer well, life? Every single day, like um, our president goes on the intercom and prays and gives us the announcements. And then before every class, the teacher will pray with us. And then there's a closing prayer at the end of the day. 
So mm -hmm. has that sunk in kind of personally in your spiritual life? Do you find that um, you, you find yourself turning to prayer maybe more regularly than you might yeah. otherwise? Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I, this is such a fascinating conversation. Yes. I want to ask you all these questions too, but you know, <laughs> believe it or not, it's time for our first break. So we'll be back with you after this break for more Making the Grade. KNXC thanks all its loyal viewers and respected businesses who have supported your Catholic television station. Now you can support KNXT with program underwriting by having your name, your company's name, or organization associated with your favorite program. Detailed information about you or your company will appear before and after each program or day part you select. Keep the quality and spiritual message alive and make a difference. Call 559-488-7440 today or go online at knxt.tv to find out more about program underwriting on KNXT. Welcome back to another great episode of Making the Grade where we share news and information about Catholic education and we're so happy to pick back up on this topic of forming student leaders and I we've had a little crew change here during the second half of the show we're joined by here my co-host Kim Cochran who just magically appeared on set. It's hey, summer Kim. so who knows where I know I've been. exactly I'm not letting you <laughs> off the hook before asking you what student leadership activities you were involved in in high school. Oh my goodness so, so you talked about that. <laughs> exactly. You know I, I think this club you is still about around. my illustrious flag girl career. Flag girl. I am so impressed that you were a flag girl. You should see me march. Do you have any hidden flags anywhere? <laughs> no. no. Okay. Um, FBLA, I think that's still around. Is that what still is a club? That? Future Business Leaders of America. I don't know. even know if that's still a club, if it's around. Anyway, it wasn't just about business. It was a lot of leadership. And so Mr. Sanchez would take us to businesses around mm -hmm. the city and introduce us to people that could possibly be mentors to us. And um, so it was really exciting. I learned a lot, I learned how to be a leader, how to organize our group. Um, and so it was a great opportunity for me to begin. Um, going to schools was actually, mm -hmm. uh, because schools are a business, right? So schools, uh, we went to schools. I was able to meet some principals. And um, so I just knew that that's what I was going to do. So. That's so awesome. Oh, great. It was fun. And Russell and I have a side bet. Were you a cheerleader in high school? I wasn't a cheerleader, but I was on the drill team. Okay. And I was on the city drill team and on, um, I don't guess they don't have drill teams anymore. <laughs> I'm just dating myself here. Um, and so I was on the drill team. And so that was fun. So, oh, awesome. and I was a, I was a princess on a couple of I knew it. Too, I so, knew you, you were know. a princess. I wasn't going to say that, but since, you know, you brought it up about Erica, I thought I'd say Did it Did you well. get ride on the Mercedes too. <laughs> I think we just rode on like floats. I don't remember a Mercedes, but we, I remember us working for days together to make floats. So that was fun. So. Do you guys have floats at your homecoming? You do? Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's always a fun. The whole process is fun, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's awesome. a whole day of just making floats. Well, and you know, I think that this week we kind of joke around about this princess thing or being a homecoming prince or something like that, but clearly it's a point that your peers have stood right. up and said, you're someone that we admire and we want to recognize you for that. Right. So, so I'm so happy that you didn't wear your tiara to making the grade today. <clears throat> I was going to, I was told I couldn't bring it next time. Okay. Can I bring it? Uh, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> I Check back it. in. We should have all so am I on for the next you are. question? Yeah. Oh, I get to ask a question. Okay, so let's see. How about this? Um, so you guys have been talking about this great topic of leadership at your school. And so as leaders, we aren't leaders until we have followers. So you have a lot of kids at your school. Um, your enrollment, I guess, is about 600 kids at your school, right? right. And um, hopefully not all of them are following you, but some of them are. Um, so well, how do you get people to follow you as leaders? So what do you do in the, in the groups that you belong to? Um, how do you get people to come along and, and say, okay, yeah, great, I wanna do that too. You wanna start? I try to talk to everybody just so that they don't feel left out. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I see a new person, I make a point to go up, I say my name, mm -hmm. what grade I'm going to be, and, and then I just get to know them. So then I get another friend in my friend group. That's wonderful. That's great. 
what do you do? Um, I think if you gain their trust, then they can look up to you and be able to follow you in what you do. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're on teams and you're a part of courts and you're um, in clubs. And so once you are part of those clubs um, and you have the people that say, yes, I want to do that, then you have to be a good friend to them. But what else do you need to do so that they trust you as a leader of a group? You need to just be trustworthy. You need to do what you know is right. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes easier said than done, right? Yeah. right. Especially in sure. high school. And you guys face so many things that we didn't face when we were right. in high school. I think the right. advent of so much technology mm -hmm. is, I heard you say the word a few moments ago, Shelby, friends. Mm -hmm. And I think even right. something as simple as friends or friendship has sure. been redefined in an age of social media that we didn't have to deal with when we were in high school. Mm -hmm. One of the things, we, can't, we cannot interview high school students without asking about preparation for college. And you girls yeah. are about halfway through your high school career so I know you're getting ready to do exciting things this year like taking the SATs and mm -hmm. considering colleges. Erica how has the leadership role that you've held in high school do you think prepared you for what you're going to face when you go into college? Well I think well I like the big trusting issue and I like to have people trust me and me trust people so I think and when I go to college I'll mm -hmm. be able to find friends that I can hang out with and mm -hmm. be with and just make my college experience fun. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. So trust in, in terms of somebody that you know you can rely on who has good judgment. And yeah. They had good great. experience because since they didn't go to St. Francis, which is your local right. Catholic school, they went to public school. Then coming into Garces, you were able to be a friend and find friends. And so you probably have a lot of those qualities already. Yeah, I wonder yeah. too, Shelby, if, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, seeking out new friends. And I wonder if because you were on the other side of that, if maybe that inspires you a little bit to be It that does, person, so. just because I know what it's like to come in and not know anybody. So, mm -hmm. and that's, it can be scary at some points and I don't want anybody else to be scared yeah. so sure. that's great well um, let's talk for just a moment about um, for you Shelby this issue of college and I hate to ask when you're just not even starting <laughs> junior year if you know where you want to go to college but I'm sure you've thought about the process and the applications and mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure on high school students these days so talk about how leadership is going to help prepare you for that college process leadership it will help me because I'll be able to go talk to people mm -hmm. that some of the kids that don't have leadership skills might be go might be too afraid to go talk to somebody who might be able to help them mm -hmm. or give them direction in where they should go. So that's how I think leadership will help me. That's okay. great. Erica with so many things on your to-do list, you've got a very busy course load and sports and social activities. How do you balance your workload in school? It's hard, but Sometimes I have to like say no to friends because I have mm -hmm. to stay home and do homework or mm -hmm. have soccer and it's tough, but I, I, I have to sure. admit, and I, I hope he's not watching, but my son Adam has on occasion asked me to tell him that he can't go do something with his friends right. because he knew that he was too busy with work to do, but sometimes right. it's hard to exert, right. you know, the when you're in the face of peer pressure to exert the schedule that you know you have. How about you, Shelby? How, is, how do you well, balance everything? Uh, we have our block schedule, so on every 140 day, we have collaboration. And all the teachers stay after school, and you can go in and can get help, mm -hmm. and there's not allowed to be any sports practices mm -hmm. or anything. So you can go in and talk to your teachers, get all your homework done, go to your sports, and then you might still have like an hour or two of homework, but mm -hmm. it's not as bad as having four hours, so. I love that, and it's called collaration. Kim, yes. I need that. Mm -hmm. I need some collaboration. We need, collaboration <laughs> I know. We need to schedule it exactly. into your busy schedule. <laughs> I'm curious about something that um, you said earlier um, about um, knowing how to be a leader. And so um, I read a statistic the other day that said um, that I guess genetically, I guess you get from your parents just about 30% of your traits to be a leader, but the other 70% comes from your environment. So your home, your school, the people that you're around. Um, you wanna talk maybe and share with us, because I'm sure that there's parents that wanna know, how do I, how do I help my children become leaders? And how do I help them do the things that you guys are doing in high school? What do you think that your parents did to help you become a leader? 
I think my parents had my brother, and I think that made me a really good leader. The practice child. Yeah. There you go. So, because I was the, well, I wasn't the only one, but, like, I helped him, and I, like, showed him, like, okay, we can't do this, mm -hmm. like, we need to do this instead. So, I think that really helped me. So, gave you some responsibility. Yeah. Okay. And what about you? Um, well, my sister moved out. And I just think like me being the, with just my parents, it taught me that I have to like clean up after myself and just do all the things on my own. So again, responsibility. Exactly. And probably some choices along the way yeah. that you made that helped you because leaders have to make lots of decisions. I hope the parents who are out there listening just heard what these girls had to say too. <laughs> I hope so too. They're actually recognizing what goes into parenting and helping with that. We're getting really close to the end of our program. We always do like to close in a prayer and we're so lucky that we have two students here. We, we usually do this by video, but, but this month we're actually going to do it live here on set. And so we're asking Great. Shelby and Erica to lead us all in prayer and for our listeners we and viewers we just ask you to join us in this moment of prayer okay in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen. amen Jesus good shepherd shepherd teach us through your spirit to walk the your light of your way of light to live your way of truth and in all things to act with love and compassion help us to come to the Father by knowing you loving you and serving you and each other May our schools be places of wonder, learning, and peace, where the lessons of today prepare us for the challenges of tomorrow. May your mother Mary guide our footsteps as she guided yours. This prayer we make in faith. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, we do want to thank you girls so much for being with us. And, and Kim, in the minute that we have just left, I guess as a high, uh, an elementary school principal, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your thoughts on leadership before we end the episode. I think that as we have a great responsibility to bring our children to and train them in to be leaders and we have just like the girls said giving them responsibility helping them through choices and decisions that they have to make I think the parents have a great responsibility most parents want their children to be leaders and um, and there's ways that we can do that and nurture that in them every day so. And Shelby, for any students who are out there watching just in 30 seconds or less, what advice do you have real quick? I would just say meet as many people as possible because you never know what's going to happen down the road. And just knowing people opens so many doors for you. Great advice. Tremendous words of wisdom. And Kim, I'm so excited that on our next episode of Making the Grade, we're going to continue this topic of forming Great. student leaders. We'll have one of the administrators from Garces Memorial High School to join us on this very important Great. topic. And we invite you, our viewers, to be with us again next time as we take on um, this topic of forming student leaders. And we ask you to pray for all of our students, for their families, and for teachers and administrators. And we'll see you next time on Making, Making the Grade. Making the Grade is sponsored by a grant from Monsignor Craig Harrison and St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Bakersfield.